Hey, it's Mazzy, and I'm gonna talk about why did the Prince estate do this wankerish move and not allow the producers of the documentary on Sinead O'Connor called Nothing Compares. They didn't allow her to use one of her greatest hits. Written by Prince, Nothing Compares to You. A very wankerish move, and I want to talk about this. Uh, this is her recent uh, greatest hits album that came out on vinyl for the first time of the last year, double album. Wonderful music. I'm a huge, huge, huge Sinead O'Connor fan, and I'm a huge Prince fan. Let me read you the article here. First of all, <laughs> what a great uh, set of photographs illustrating this article. Uh, this particular one is from Consequence, website and i'm just gonna let you uh i want you to decide you you put your comments below prince estate denied Sinead o'connor documentary the use of nothing compares to you the prince estate denied nothing compares a new documentary about Sinead o'connor the rights to her cover of prince songs nothing compares to you in a statement to billboard prince's half sister and co-heir wrote i didn't feel she deserves the use of the song. Now, that song made a shitload of money for Prince. Shane O'Connor did the definitive version. It was done by uh, a, a, the family, a, a, a Prince-produced act, and it's a wonderful song, but no one really knew of, of that song until Sinead O'Connor recorded it on her second album. Prince wrote Nothing Compares to You for his side project, The Family, and the song appeared on their self-titled 1985 debut. Had you heard it before? I hadn't. So that hit in 1990 took her from a buzzy singer-songwriter with a few minor hits in Europe to an international sensation with three Grammy nominations, including Record of the Year. There's a reason that documentary director Catherine Ferguson chose to name her documentary nothing compares. That is the nucleus of her, and it actually represents a lot what this documentary showcases about her life. Prince's half-sister, Sharon Nelson, offered two reasons for refusal. Okay, one is financial and one personal. Nothing compares to Prince's live version with Rosie Gaines that is featured on Hits 1. This is coming out again, okay? There's that live version, apparently, on this that's being reissued. That's the financial thing. That's what we're talking about. And we're releasing that album on vinyl on November 4th, she said. Okay. This version would help sell the Prince version even more. Not that they have to help each other, but come on. This is the definitive version. But let's see what sister, sis, Prince's sis, half sis, has to say. I didn't feel O'Connor deserved to use the song my brother wrote in her documentary, so we declined. His version is the best. No, it's not. I love Prince's version. There's a version on this Prince album. This is a great comp of songs he gave away. What's this called? This is called Originals. Uh, songs he gave away like Manic Monday uh, to uh, the Bangles and so many other great songs. And of course, Prince does these wonderful versions, and you can't deny it. And does music have to be a competition, Miss Nelson? <laughs> God, what? Talk about a wank. This is a wankerish shit, in my opinion. She didn't elaborate on O'Connor's merits. Might it be the retaliation of an interview that the singer gave to New York Times last year? O'Connor, Sinead O'Connor, recounted her first horrified meeting with Prince, saying he terrorized her rebuked her for swearing in interviews, and suggested a pillow fight, only to whack her with something hard inside his pillowcase. When she tried to escape, she alleged he chased her in his car. And I've heard about this in her autobiography as well. And, um, okay, first of all, he didn't like her swearing. I know he's a Jehovah's Witness. He's very religious. If you've Listen to his lyrics. Believe me, that's kind of a hypocritical move on 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 any level, on any level. And the the producers of this documentary, I will admit, were very clever. Did the scene around the shooting of that video where she has a tear in her eye and she sings beautifully. It was all over MTV. I don't understand this. I, does you understand this? Yeah. 
Prince Estate owns the rights to the song. I didn't realize they needed permission to present her recording because you can download the song, you can buy it on record, it's everywhere. And if they're re-releasing uh, the Prince version, a live Prince version, I think just by the fact of this documentary, it would um, you know spur more sales and people to go check out Prince's version. I don't get that. Anyway, it goes back to this great album. This is the album. I think this is an amazing, this is a perfect record. This is an angry record, a powerful record, a beautiful record. It's got intensity. The original cover in the UK uses this photograph where she's screaming, she's angry. She's just so alive here. And what a great, great album cover photograph uh, debut. And this record uh, just blew me away when I first got it. Jackie. Mandinka, Jerusalem. This documentary is, you have to check this documentary out if you like documentaries on music. I mean, she, you know, she had a tumultuous life. Some of her uh, situations were self-inflicted. I will admit that. But she had the balls to stand up. She had, you know, her, the her intensity, her musicality, her voice. Women in Ireland really weren't treated well during this time. They're almost like second-class citizens in their rights, whether it's about choice, whether it's about work, uh, whether it's about even being in a rock band and being very vocal and out there. Uh, they were subservient, and, and she spoke about it. And someone who was very religious growing up into Christianity, she spoke out against the church organized religion, and for, for good reason. That one moment on Saturday Night Live really stop the trajectory of her career, her music career. Although over the years, she's made a series of wonderful records. Uh, this is a 12 inch single EP, Emperor's New Clothes, What Do You Want, Mandinka, different mixes, collaborations, amazing collaborations she's done with hip hop artists, reggae artists, uh, amazing, beautiful, Irish ballads, what a voice. Huge, huge fan. Theology, faith, and courage. In 1992, I was in New York City and I got tickets with my buddy Larry to go see the 30th anniversary Bob Dylan anniversary concert. 30 years of his first album, 1962 to 1992, and star-studded event, great variety of artists, Sinead O'Connor was on the stage there and was part of it. And Dylan was a fan of Sinead O'Connor. And of course, the whole reason Sinead O'Connor got into singing and music was because of Bob Dylan, because of Slow Train Coming. That catapulted Sinead O'Connor into the music world, into singing and to getting into band and then uh, becoming a singer. And that directness that Dylan was singing about in terms of Christianity really spoke to Sinead O'Connor. So the 1992 concert, Sinead gets up and as soon as she walks on stage, she was introduced by Chris Christopherson. Half the audience cheered her and half the audience booed. And what a fucked up situation when Dylan fans, I mean, if you follow Dylan, you know about Dylan's years of protest, you know where Dylan's coming from, and you protest this woman because she tore a picture of the Pope up. I thought it was pure bullshit. She came out, it took a while, and she um, recited a, an acapella piece, and then Chris Christopherson walked over and hugged her, and they show the scene in um, the documentary, and they walk off stage. I've said many times on my channel, music is not a competition. Music needs to be shared, and it really pisses me off that the Prince estate has gone to these lengths to not allow an artist who actually made money for Prince use this great song, this great version of the song in a documentary. They denied the use. And I think it's small pettiness. I think it's, it's more personal than financial. I think they didn't like that Sinead again, once again, spoke up some years ago and and shared this experience and uh you know we weren't there whatever happened uh you know prince is no saint Sinead o'connor is no saint 
but it should be about the music and about us enjoying the music. And for the Prince estate to deny the producers of this documentary the use of this wonderful rendition of this Prince song in this documentary, I think is just pure wankery bullshit. So watch the Sinead documentary on Showtime. Nothing compares. A fabulous uh, look into the life of a, a tumultuous life of a great artist, a great social activist, a great political activist in Sinead O'Connor. I think one of the most important, you know, artists of the last 40 years, Sinead O'Connor. Great records, beautiful voice. And, um, you know, I support her in this situation. And um, unfortunately, I think uh, the Nelson family, the Prince family in this state is all wrong in this case. So curious of your thoughts. Mazzy loves you and thanks for watching.